Well, that was quite a video. Is that, is that lifted spirits? Now, there may be some of you, of course, that are thinking that's completely far-fetched. But there might be one or two of us that are thinking, well, particularly given the last few weeks, actually, is that possible? I hope, though, we're all aligned in that, that that's a future, of course, we'd want to avoid. Good morning, I'm Mark Evans. I'm Chief Executive of O2. And before I start, can I just say thank you to Claire, to Enders, and to Deloitte for inviting me here to speak today, which is for what is always a, a great event. Now, the reason I opened with that video is because I'm, I'm here to talk about through the opportunities for technology to be a power for good or more specifically, for mobile to be a power for good, to ensure that that video is not the future that we have in store. Because I'm confident that people like, like you and I, across technology, media, and telecoms, genuinely hold the key to a more positive future for Britain. And today, I'm gonna to set out my case for why. Firstly, the value that mobile already brings to the UK. Secondly, the opportunities for our sector to overcome some of the key challenges we face in our country. And thirdly, why it's vitally important that we work as well as we can together. I truly believe that we have an opportunity to do something special, to empower people to live better lives and make this country a better case, place. So where shall I start? Well, the power of mobile. The power of mobile, you've heard me say this before, it's no less important now than when I started banging the drum on this stage a number of years ago. Of all the ingredients that keep our economy moving, mobile is one of the most critical. It's that invisible infrastructure that keeps our country ticking. And I believe one of the most overlooked parts of critical national infrastructure that our country relies on. Figures show that there are over 90 million connections in the UK, from phones and smartwatches to fire alarms and credit card machines. In fact, on our own network alone, that's the largest in the UK, we have almost 35 million connections. That includes two million smart hubs connecting homes, helping the energy sector efficiently optimize supply and demand. And that's before we even mention every vending machine, delivery lorry, or London bus that helps, this, helps keep this country moving. But we shouldn't forget the very first thing that started it, which is phones. Smartphones are the most popular internet-connected device in the country. And for a quarter of young adults, it's their only way to get online. Demand for mobile usage has grown by 150% in the last three years. And pricing has been kept incredibly competitive. It's now, on average, 20% lower over that same period. So let's put that together. That's critical national infrastructure running vital services for consumer and businesses at an ever more affordable price. Which other sector can say the same? So put all of this together, and it's estimated that mobile communications directly contributes around 20 billion to the UK economy. And that's before we start talking about the indirect benefits that mobility and connectivity drive. Now that's where we are today. Now I'm, I am aware it may sound a little self-congratulatory, but I'm, I'm not saying it for those reasons. I, I'm saying it because it provides a platform to do something even more important for this country. So what is that opportunity? Well, for me, mobile has the potential to address two of the most significant challenges we face in the UK. Firstly, our national productivity and creating a world-class economy from outside the EU. And secondly, climate change. 
If we work together and step up our collective responsibility, I'm confident the mobile sector can be a true force for good in both of these sectors. And how are we going to do this? Well, this may be where you expect me to unveil an industry charter or a big audacious goal. But the, but the truth is, that's not the entire solution. For me, it lies in small actions that ladder up to change the way we live and we work. So let's take a look at these one at a time. So firstly, productivity. So while economists may differ on the exact scale or issue, a clear fact does remain. Britain has a productivity challenge, and it's at a time when our economic credentials are about to be put under the microscope more than we've ever seen before. So where can mobile help? Well, I genuinely believe mobile connectivity, and particularly 5G, holds the key to supercharge our economy. Forecasts show that UK businesses stand to benefit by more than 30 billion pounds in productivity if they had better access to connectivity. And this includes businesses giving people mobile tools that let them work where, when, and how they want. Now, for many of us, I'm sure those plans are already on their way. But I believe the opportunity gets even more exciting when the true power of 5G is unleashed across the business and the public sector. First, let's take the NHS and the 5G Smart Ambulance. Now, that's a project we're investing in with Samsung and the Millbrook testbed, and it has the potential to revolutionize patient diagnosis on the move saving time, resource, and potentially even lives. We're also working on the UK's first 5G factory trial in Worcestershire. We're doing that with Worcester Bosch, Yamazaki Mazak, and a range of other partners. There we're using predictive analytics and real-time sensors to keep machines running, and then remote diagnostics to reduce downtime if machines break. Now, trials such as these have already proven to improve productivity by up to 2%. Now, that's significant if you're in that sector. If we can scale this nationally, that contributes a further 4 billion to the UK economy. Separately, there's the work we're undertaking with Northumbrian Water, using 5G capabilities for faster downloads and real-time streaming. That helps them visualize underground infrastructure more easily identifying faults, save time and money. And let's come right back to telecommunications and look at the work that we did with ITN and ITV in producing and broadcasting the world's very first live ad powered by 5G. We used 5G bonded cameras where we could transfer high volumes of data at great quality and high speed. And this will open up a huge array of opportunities for broadcasters in the future. Now, all of the examples that I've referenced are in the first few months of a 5G launch. So imagine what's going to be possible in the years ahead when we expand 5G, we're able to use a shared rural network and release new capacity. We really do have an exciting future ahead. So I hope you can see why I believe mobile can truly provide a crucial productivity boost for the nation and just when we need it. So now let me turn to the other challenge, or should I say the other opportunity. It's one of environment. Arguably, it's, it's the single biggest challenge facing world leaders, business leaders, in fact, everyone on the planet today. Again, I don't have an industry charter for you, and I, I definitely don't have a magic wand. In fact, for the first time in my career, if you allow me, I'm going to quote Sir David Attenborough, who said in front of MPs last year, we must think about what's practically possible. And that's where I believe the opportunity lies. Not in big macro targets alone, but in sensible, pragmatic, everyday action that its scale can make a difference. So again, what can we do? 
What can a CEO of a mobile company add to this well-trodden debate? Well, I'm fortunate to be working in a business that's been thinking about this and taking action for over a decade and seeing what difference it makes. Now, don't get me wrong, we've still got a long way to go, but we are making progress. In 2008, we started using recycled bags in our retail stores. In 2012, we took chargers out of the box. Now, these are a small set of changes, but ones that have resulted in 15 million customers making greener choices for a more sustainable planet. In that same year, 2012, we kickstarted our flexible working program by running all of our operations from home. That might be a test bed for weeks to come. Our calculations have shown that we've saved over 20,000 tons of carbon as a result over the last eight years. Yes, another small action, but a big and lasting outcome. Or well, just earlier this week, when we unveiled our new plans to help tackle climate change. We've shared a series of changes we're making across our business that result in a significant outcome. First, we're reviewing every single item that consumes energy in our business and ensuring it runs from renewables. We started this in, 20, in 2008. Every office, every store, every mast, Item by item, we're committed to become a net zero business by 2025. Again, small actions, but making a real difference. But we're going further. We're focused on the carbon emissions in our full supply chain. Because as a network provider, our total emissions, of course, include our partners and vendors. So it's important we use our relationships and our influence and our buying power to facilitate broader and greater change. And that's why we're also committed to reducing carbon emissions by at least 30% across the whole supply chain by that same year, 2025. This is a journey and we need to go further. Mobile is a sector that cannot just change itself, but have a significant positive impact to other sectors as well. Let me give you some examples. Like aiding power in buildings, in homes and buildings that can be managed more intelligently. Or reducing water waste using flow sensors and real-time leakage alerts. Making fewer unnecessary journeys, thanks to smart inventory. Or street lights that switch off when no one's there. And what about in years to come, connected vehicles that have the ability to reduce CO2 emissions? These are all fairly small actions in isolation, but they're ones that will make a difference at scale. But they are moves that we can't do alone. We must do them by working together. Technology companies, town planners, government departments, energy suppliers, train companies, and local councils. No business is exempt no person is excused. I must act now, my company must act now, and so I believe should you. The mobile sector has the ability to put us on the right track for a more sustainable planet. And I'd welcome and encourage all of the operators committing to do likewise. Together, we have a collective responsibility, but a wonderful opportunity. So let me go back to where I started. I hope I've left you in no doubt in my mind of three key beliefs. Firstly, a truly mobile Britain is a more competitive, more innovative, and more inspiring Britain. Secondly, mobile is a force for good. It can enhance productivity and help us become a greener and more sustainable nation. And thirdly, well, it's something that underpins almost every example that I have cited today. This is about partnership. This is about people and business coming together, taking small actions that ladder up to big outcomes. At O2, partnership is in our DNA. We're committed to play our part 
Are you ready to come with us? Now I'd like to leave you with this video which highlights the incredible future we have in store when we work well together. Thank you for listening. Brilliant, thanks Mark. I think we're all very, very happy about the second video. Um, <laughs> um, I think everyone in this room, probably during this conference, um, is thinking about that homeworking point you made. Just share a little bit with us about what that really means in terms of the extra capacity that you're going to need to deal with over potentially the next few weeks, even months, of if, if we are really going to have to shift to home working at massive scale. Does that present an, a, a completely new set of challenges for you? Um, look, the industry and the sector, I think, prepares itself for specific events. You know, when the Olympics comes on or when there's you know, a big sporting event or a major catastrophe, of course, we all hit to our mobile devices and increase connectivity. So I'm very confident that all of the networks are incredibly resilient and able to flex to that capacity. But it, it, I think it does show us that actually we've got to think about how we work and how we live our lives. Maybe it's moments like this that kickstart into thinking about our behaviors day to day. And I, I'm sure I'm not the only one that has this question is, what happens tomorrow if you're not able to go to your place of work? Can you continue to provide the exceptional service that you do to your colleagues and your customers? And of course, mobile connectivity is right at the heart of that. I think we just could, I mean, I was on a crash course last night, just learning how to do a sort of multi-screen multi conference calls with an entire group of colleagues and clients. I mean, I think already I'm hearing from companies that it's having a beneficial effect on everyone getting their head around senior management teams all the way down how to use this technology at scale. It's been there for some time, but now we're really gonna to need to use it. We, we are indeed, and look, I touched on the fact that you know, we started our flexible working program in, in 2012. I say we started it, we kick-started it. So we regularly test whether we can continue to provide our service to customers at moments where they need, where they need us most. So that's a great example. So it can be done. Uh, and of course, what we need to do is, is work in, in conjunction with each other to make sure that, that we can support every single sector at the moment when our customers most need us. A couple of other uh, follow-up questions. So um, the 5G rollout is currently city-based. Uh, the government's obviously very determined to get broadband rolled out. throughout. The, so what are the challenges to get 5G to everyone? First question. Second question. Your competitors have bundled the broadband and the mobile proposition together. You're still super single focused on, on mobile. What, what challenges does that present O2 over the next couple of years? Yeah, well, you know, I, I think ever since first coming into the role, I had that question of, you know, Mark, you've got to go convergent, haven't you? And I said at the time that, that, that certain parts of the sector, of course, will, uh, will be a attracted to that combination, but not everybody. And actually what we were doing is being laser focused on the mobile opportunities that presented themselves. You know, our business has grown quicker than any other in the last three years. We've, we've delivered 14 consecutive quarters of growth. Um, and I don't see any let up in that going forward. That's not to say, of course, that I think fixed mobile convergence will appeal. So it's something that we'll keep a close eye on. And if customers believe that it's something that we should turn our attention to, then maybe we will. If I come back to the connectivity point, um, and I'll pick up on something that Oliver said uh, earlier, um, one of the things I'm really proud about as a sector is we got together over a year ago and recognized the important need to improve mobile connectivity for all. There are parts of the country that simply don't have the connectivity that we have an ambition for. But economically getting it to there was a challenge for us. Now, all four mobile operators came together and perhaps in an unprecedented move, we've tabled a solution to government and to the regulator to say how we can do this. And something that I'm really proud of is, by the way, we're at the cusp of signing that agreement, which will lift geographical mobile coverage up into the 90 percentage point mark, which is a significant difference from where we are today. Um, and one of the things that I'm really proud about, and it sort of links to what O2 stands for, is to do that in a sustainable way. Because, of course, customers want brilliant connectivity. Our shareholders want us to do it in an economic way. But communities want us to do it in a socially responsible way as well. So what you'll see at the heart of the agreement, and I hope it will come very soon, is that a number of the operators are actively looking to share. And that's good news for shareholders, that's great news for customers, and, it, and it's true to our commitment on sustainability. 
Brilliant. Well, I think we could go on, but uh, we're going to move on to the next session. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. Thank you.